What's going on everyone? This is Precog and today I wanted to share some extra content from my trip to Singapore that was too long to make the original video vlog. This is an interview with the founders of Zeppelin & Co, the popular audio cafe in Singapore that is doing something unique that I haven't seen with any other retailer. I'll let the footage speak for itself or more closely the owners speak for themselves and what their shop is all about. But suffice to say that it was great getting to meet everyone at Zeppelin Co and sort of getting exposure to and understanding the dynamic behind what they are trying to achieve in the retail space. All right, and let's dive into the actual interview now. So maybe you guys could tell me a little bit about how you guys came up with the idea for Zeppelin Co and sort of the inspiration. She came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. So she came up with the idea and then uh, I joined later. So I think she will make her introduction first. In the hmm. Very quickly, obviously we wanted a, a space that, I, if, I created a space because mm -hmm. I didn't have any audio store that I like to go to. Oh, okay. Um, mainly because I just feel like it's so bizarre that it's become like a show of gear and you drive accounts and and, and it's very, um, it's not very welcoming for, right. for someone who is new and right, frankly like afraid, you know. Then I just decided like, you know, if I want to do this, I want to do this my own way. Mm -hmm. I cannot deal with like putting price tags on a product and mm -hmm. putting it on a wall. And I also feel like, you know, when you really want to test music, and if there's someone just hovering, a salesperson, right, like, right. Hovering I really understand that, yeah. to you, you know, and I'm not the, it's just horrible. I, I'm not even listening to my music because I'm reacting to right, the person right. who's standing there. Right, You're under pressure to make exactly. a decision. So I just wanted a place where just I'm like any other, um, and, I, and I strongly believe that there are definitely a lot of other people like me. Mm -hmm. I just haven't found them yet. Right. So okay. if I created a space like that, mm -hmm. then I'm curious to see who would walk through the door and also like who would really enjoy being in a space, like who would really like us. And suddenly I realized that there's so many, there's yeah. just so many of us um, liking this concept, like just coming here to chill, have a cup of coffee, appreciating genuine conversations. Like we don't want to, mm -hmm. we don't want to be like a gallery. We didn't want it to be posh. Yeah. Um, we didn't want it to be run down either, you know. Right. Like, but just kind of like a enjoy enjoyable space to come home to when you really want to talk about audio with your favorite people again. Then, then we could. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I get my coffee machine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. did you know that you wanted to have like a sort of a cafeteria from the start? Like you wanted to serve yes. drinks. It was from the okay. start. Okay. Like I've always, I, I when before, so before I knew about sound, mm -hmm. I, I've always enjoyed like hanging in cafes. Yeah. Cause it's just so nice. It's so mm -hmm. relaxing. You can do your, you can do your things. But then, um, but I, 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 I cannot cook. I, I'm just not good at that. <laughs> like, you know, if, if you're not a chef, you shouldn't run a cafe because yeah. if your chef runs, then you're kind you're of stranded. Right. You, you don't know any recipes. You, you don't yeah. know how to recreate the recipes. It's just not my talent really, but I have mm. a super picky ear, so oh, okay. I've always, yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I, I, when I realized that I could tell the difference between sound and I was like, mm -hmm. nobody mm. said a cafe has to be food, you know, right. so Correct. why not let my cafe be audio instead? And then okay, very cool, like, it's a very cool way of music, thinking of it. Yeah, mm. music and coffee, but right. you know, like also, um, ladies, you know, we all talk about this, like audio is such a male yeah, okay. environment, so yeah. it's not, so it's also, you know, like the ladies wouldn't want to go into an audio store. You know, all the bot faces, like you look at Ken Jam, you, you just have a <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. you can count the number of ladies with your hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not so it's not just for ladies because they just prefer to buy in this environment. It's mm -hmm. a lot more friendly because when I step into a store, all the guys turn mm -hmm. uh, because you are the other one. Right. You know? The so other one it's, out. It's such a horrible yeah. feeling really. And the conversation and, and then the the just, just everything. The touch is is completely mm -hmm. different. But then, not just the ladies, but also like Fong, he was completely unaware of the industry, yeah. and he's okay. a guy. So it's not just related to ladies, but mm -hmm. but he's a guy, and he, yeah. there are guys who don't care for tech mm -hmm. and, and uh, specifications as well. Like he, we grew up listening to music together. Mm -hmm. So and when he knew about these like crazy tower line. Your phones and the cable. <laughs> yeah. He was like, sis, like, you know, what on earth, right? So when he found out, and, and that's the thing, you know, even even not just for ladies, but even mm -hmm. for men who care about music but not care about sound, like, the only way to really expose them is mm -hmm. for them to feel the emotions. 
Mm. We all, every single person who has got amazing sound equipment, mm -hmm. have just like tried to tell their friends about it. Right. And you know how it yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just goes one ear out the other. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when he experienced it and he was like, wow, you know, you really reconnect mm -hmm. with your music. And he has got a full outside view of, of Zed because when he, he joined, when Zed was like, I think I joined when Zeppelin was about not four years yet, about three years, almost reaching four. Okay. Uh, I was from the oil industry, so I oh. I am actually a specialist in uh, merger and acquisitions. Okay. Uh, in the oil space, um, and I uh, worked for a couple of famous commodity traders in the industry. But then, when I had time to think about what I'm gonna do post the oil industry, was it to go back in? Mm -hmm. or to try my hand at something different then I thought, okay, um, there's a lot of room to explore here from an outsider looking in, when I see retail I see that retail has lost a lot of its soul retail has not evolved while the online, mm -hmm. while the online experience has so when people say retail is dead what they really mean is retail stayed stuck in the right, 80s right. and then the online store experience took away what, what was yeah. what, what before was only them. So when I look at this business together with Christy, you know, I was you know telling her and saying that the retail, this is something that we really can do a lot because this industry is so fragmented mm -hmm. and there's everyone still doing things the old way. So we thought, look, there is a way for us to really really drive this forward. So the direction of the company uh, was also something that uh, is a lot of what I'm doing, uh, but to give a good um, explanation it's kind of like I structure and lay the foundations for what we're gonna do and how we are gonna achieve different things whether it's search engine optimization marketplace okay. entries but Christy really really takes charge of the branding really mm -hmm. really takes charge of making sure that the ethos and the core of the company stays in this way because we both agree very much like fully I think the one thing is bring the soul back to retail mm -hmm. and the second most important thing is we do not want to erect barriers to entry which is the right. biggest problem in the industry yeah. we never wanted customers we, we wanted people mm. like customers it's, it's so sad to reduce like i reduce you to a customer yeah. <laughs> that's like, like audio copy that is people. that's so sad yeah. it is just really really all about people and you know as a retailer we could make mistakes you know, yeah. we make mistakes right. we gave you the wrong thing or maybe we Maybe your product's not working and mm -hmm. you know we have to take care of that. And if you saw us as people and not just a retailer, yeah. it's, it's both ways. And yeah. you'll be a little bit more forgiving with us, mm -hmm. hopefully. Like yeah, yeah, we work we, we, we work yeah. so hard here and yeah. like yeah, it's, it's just both ways. Yeah. In the in the end the the um, Zeppelin is a plane. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it's also it's also the rock group is also led Zeppelin. Yeah. So okay. it's about really just you know, just doing things differently. Correct. Uh, and it's about a journey, so yeah. that's why we are called Zeppelin. Yeah. Um, okay. For those people who don't, I didn't. Already, I wasn't aware, so yeah, it's yeah. so, yeah. good to know. So it was yeah. just like you know, everyone was telling us retail is dead, but we all have a shop that we enjoy going to, mm -hmm. and when you have a choice between going to a store you like and buying online, yeah. mm -hmm. you would go to a store, like especially for products like this, you want to have a listen. Right. Why, why wouldn't you? Especially with audio, like yeah. you need to get your ears on it. It's yeah. so subjective. Yeah. And you get to try not just one thing, but you could at the same place in the same time within an hour, just try the piece mm -hmm. connected to IEM cables right. and, and then you know, if you feel like maybe you want to explore headphones today, they're, they're here as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we wanted a place to be audio copy people. Yeah. And we didn't choose the word music because everyone knows music already, but nobody knows audio. audio. So we wanted to be yeah. super specific. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah we wanted to... We've been supporting musicians. We've Correct. Been, we've oh, been... so do you guys do like sponsorships? We actually do a lot of events pre-COVID. So oh, okay. every two weeks, we have live musicians coming into Zeppelin. Okay. So live music is allowed again yeah. now. So mm -hmm. we might hold we might. live jazz again. Oh wow! Okay, very cool. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if if everyone knows, but that's the, I mean, like I'm sure a lot of your audience would know that so mm -hmm. many of the super top IEM brands mm -hmm. are founded by musicians. Correct. Oh uh, yeah, right. They right. always have a musician somewhere, <laughs> and who knows? Maybe one day we'll get them to come here and play. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's We've actually super fun. We have really good acoustics outside, by the way. Yeah. Outside. Oh, okay. uh, we've done we've done two piece jazz. We've mm. done four piece brass bands before, and it's 
amazing because I so many people haven't even heard live music before. So maybe you guys could talk a little bit more about like the trajectory of where you see Zeppelin Co going in the future. Uh, Zeppelin's concept is definitely going to be able to go regional. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and why do we say regional instead of global? Very clearly is that we believe that in the current world, we're going to see much more regionalization. But a region is definitely much more, uh, it's something that we can curate well enough compared to global. Right, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the first steps. Never say never, of course, mm -hmm. but the regional direction is really what we are seeing for the first time. And and to tie it all together, the evolution of retail, base base for us, we use the tool as audio, uh, is definitely our main ethos. Bringing the soul back to retail through audio. Uh, where do we see ourselves apart from that? Is this concept is is something that is definitely scalable but it has to be done right mm. right what are the control variables the control variables that Zeppelin won't give up are quality to service right bringing the human element back to retail mm. that's fundamental uh, and we would never want to lose it no matter how we move whether it is a franchise model or we're going into countries directly with a local partner right these are all structures that you will hear from me eventually. Uh, you will get those news. Uh, how is it going to be done is something that is up for discussion. But but I would yeah. be really particular because I'm super picky with how the brand is presented, the yes. brand of Zeppelin, and mm -hmm. the way there's a certain way we present ourselves. Even I, I mean, I'm sure you saw in Kanja like mm -hmm. banners, right. and artwork, right. and just just everything really. And I thought those done. banners with the, the location was really unique. That was oh, very thank cool. you. Yeah. You like those too. This is really <laughs> great work. Um, yeah. You know, every time I'm very impressed. Every time I see like the kind of artwork that she puts out. You know, when you're at Kanja. Oh, so that was, that was your idea to do That was hers and uh, Fadi and I, Fadi yeah. and I worked together, we, we bounced off ideas and yeah, actually okay. that was the last thing we added, we were just like something's missing, you know. Mm. Um, the concept of this Ken Jam this time was really in a world without travel, mm. like we still want to connect the people, so oh, it was okay. like aircraft windows, yeah. and there were coordinates and yeah. there was like, although the manufacturers, a lot of them are not here this year, mm -hmm. but we still want to be kind of their, their showcase. Okay. for yeah, their yeah. brand and remind people that these people they are they are somewhere mm -hmm. else on this earth and we all connected by coordinates you know so oh, you guys put <laughs> tremendous amount of effort yeah. into the details <laughs> yeah. 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 and, and yeah. there's like so many so much fascination yeah. like you know during the kanja our artwork style was also like you know the excitement mm -hmm. when you start a marvel movie when the mm -hmm. magazine flips yeah, so yeah. we did that fun kind of marvel-ish artwork, comic yeah. style, but not, okay. not yeah. too cutesy or yeah. like, just like everything has to be, I'm just super picky with that and yeah. hopefully one day we have more than one Zeppelin mm -hmm. around the world and yeah. you'll be a super fleet and yeah. I just want that customer to walk through the door to get that same feeling yeah. wherever, yeah. wherever, wherever we whichever right. Zeppelin right. Yeah. they go to. So you guys have talked a lot about like the connections and the people but maybe more to sort of Go back to the gear just a little bit maybe a more yeah. personal question for you guys is like what are your favorite headphones and iums for iums i'm using the odin oh okay Odin's yeah odin. very good very uh, solid it's just so much fun <laughs> i couldn't resist it was just mm. so much fun uh Lee, uh elysian and i had had a long conversation about the yeah. correctness of sound and uh, everything else yeah, but, yeah. but in the end we all have different playlists so mm -hmm. personal choice odin i'm having a lot of fun with it at the moment uh, I'm still in search for my favorite music player because my old one just died. Oh Sadly, no! Yeah, what did you have, have before? It. Um, it's a uh, super old. It's a Onkyo on on DPX oh, okay. One A that I've depended on for years. Um, also partly because like I I like my reference deck to be super flat. Mm, okay. So I can have fun with my earphones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Gotcha. Uh, form factor, easy to use. It shouldn't give me a high blood pressure when I'm scrolling in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. I understand that feeling. Yeah, Some of these yeah. older dogs. I mean, we are all yeah. using our mobile phones and it's swiping fast and fine. Mm -hmm. So you want that to be on a music player as well. Um, headphones. Oh. Headphones. Uh, I'm not a big soundstage person. Okay. I'm more about tone and intimacy and engagement. Uh, so I'm actually using the, the Rosin, the, okay. the Red Zero. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. My boss is like that one too. That's yeah, like my favorite, apparently. So. The tone is just yeah. so gripping for me, but I have, 
I have so many favorites, but that's the one I own. Um, I also have a Canathan, which is also an Odin. I don't know, the, mm -hmm. the Nordic yeah. gods have gotten, Nordic okay. gods have done something to yeah. me. Um, but actually, I really also like the new ZMF. The my, my two new ones, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of keeping my eye on the ZMF Atrium, mm -hmm. which is my my favorite ZMF so far. I really liked it as well. When I, I really like it. It's, my it's very, so very musical sound. Fun. Yeah. And it's, it's, finally, it's, this time it's a big sound. It, it, the sound stage like, yeah. is very expansive too, that's what yeah. I noticed. Yeah. And actually, one more, um, I haven't decided which one, mm -hmm. but it's the, we've recently reconnected with Fostex. Yeah, okay. and we have found so many ways to listen to the TH900 Mark II. Yeah. So we're still searching uh, between the Pro White and the Red mm -hmm. Classic Fostex TH900 Mark II. Yeah. And with all the setups that we have, we're experimenting and we're rediscovering the sound. It's actually quite amazing. So so pretty much that's my gear. True Wireless, I'm on Final Audio. Okay. Um, I already have a good deal for all the sound and everything, so it needs to just be I just want to be happy owning it, so it's like it has to be pretty, the right color, logo in the right place, battery life, okay. as well. Yeah, very, yeah. So that's my gear. Okay, right, so for me, I'll go from True Wireless all the way up. So True Wireless ZE3000, also my favorite one currently. Okay. Uh, then IEMs, I have the Echo Steel uh, Limited Edition 1695 Ti, okay. the golden one. Oh, very cool. Yeah, uh, that one's really my favorite Echo Steel today. Actually, it's the IEM that I the first IEM that I own, and the first IEM it has been staying with me throughout. Uh, there are a lot of IEMs that can perform better right now because uh, the Echo Steel 1695 Ti is 1 dB, but mm. it's a 1 dB that knocks everything out of the park. It sounds like multiple drivers, it's incredible. Uh, I love the sound, it's fast, it's tight, you know, it can do the lows really well, it can do the travel well without being sharp. Uh, I like Vision Gears. EXT a lot. So oh, yeah, I think that's that gonna be my addition to it. Uh, and headphones. Headphones, I have a current favorite which is the ZMF Atrium. The ZMF Atrium is, once I heard it, I was like, this is incredible. Um, but the Canadian Odin oh, is my favorite. Okay. It's my favorite, but the favorites evolve. Right, right. So it's time, you know what I mean. The right. things evolve all the time, but but the one six nine five Ti will be always like kind of like always because it's like first right. first right, and uh, the Canada only really special sound music musicality is something that really really yeah. quite special. And for desktop setups, for her she has the Masco Go. I have uh, the CMA twelve Master, which is the all in one deck end. Uh, it's it's the master version, so it's got the AKM chip, which is the last of its batch for oh, right. the factory, the factory down. Right now. So, so like, there's not going to be any more AKM chips anymore, <laughs> so this is a beauty that I have. But CMA15 But CMA15 sounds incredible, so I might add to my collection. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll then see. We'll see, and the Kayane HA300B Mark II, the black one. Oh, that one this is one amazing. is amazing. Yeah. Um, so good. I suspect when I start moving into tubes, mm -hmm. that's gonna be your pick. We just have to make space for it. Like, just because in space. Asia, space is such a big right, issue. Right. Right. Um, but it's just. I mean, you. We all know it's Solar Show Panjang mm -hmm. yeah. with the Kyan H A three hundred B with paired with the ZMF Atrium. There was yeah. a long queue. Yeah, yeah, I was waiting in that queue for a while. I know, yeah. it was a long queue, but it yeah. sounded so good and everyone mm -hmm. was talking about it. Right. So we, yeah. I mean, as, as retailers, we all have our favorites. The team never agrees. Never agrees. We, don't, we, we find it so difficult to agree with each other. Yeah, yeah. But, but what is really the test is when customers really walk through the door and it's just mm -hmm. not, not one person's opinion, mm -hmm. but everyone like and chose that eventually. Mm -hmm. so, that, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there any last things you guys want to add? Listen to more music. Listen to more music. <laughs> um, yeah. Come visit us. All right. Thank you guys Listen so much for your time. Us. Thank yeah. you. Thank so you. Much. So you see this? It's like a down sloping. So first off, your teeth goes on the first off like that. Just hold it there in your mouth. Don't clam down. Just hold it there. The objective is to keep your jaw in a fixed position. So once this is, goes on and the process starts, don't take it off. So start doing it as well. Okay? Let's check on the ears first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Not, not just 
sad because like some people like uh, even a little bit past the same time or something. Oh, fantastic! Nice, big, and deep holes. <laughs> is that the impression putty? Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically, that, that little foam block thing is just a little dam. It's to stop the impression material from reaching right, past right. the too deep and touching your eardrum. Because uh, then bad things happen. <laughs> So most impression party will come in a two part mm, okay. party. Once you mix them, they'll start to cure and harden. That's a common point you will see. There's a few different types and a few different colors. Mm -hmm. Generally, you'll see like a, I think Western had the agar agar one is like a, once you mix them, it's like a little pinkish. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I have. Yeah. Then there's like the the. The Chinese one has this like lime green, yellowish, okay. orange thing one. And Western has like two different colors. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the colors are. Okay. Basically, all the difference is uh, between them is like maybe some of them are a little bit harder. Ah, okay. And some of them retain the shape a little bit. Right, what you want. Right. Yeah. yeah. So just now you, you saw me place a little bit of a uh, cut to, to flatten it. Mm -hmm. That's just a little extra thing that I do to make sure that like when I scan it or when the the, the manufacturer gets it, mm -hmm. where, wherever it's like the flat surface is, is where you would like if you were cut you were to cut the face on right. the angle, right. it would more or less flush with the person's ears like that. Oh okay, yeah. very very interesting. Bit of warning to you it's gonna take a while. No worries, no worries. Yeah. So so that's the calibration plate. Mm -hmm. So this is what you put the impressions on. You see the three ah. spikes. And normally we want to make it sure it's flat. It goes on like that. And just do a check to make sure that the right. spikes are not poking out. What if someone's ear canal is like very like not elongated and no. it pokes through? Has that uh, ever happened? Um, generally speaking, it won't happen because the, the spikes are like maybe like this tall. Oh, so okay. unless you you took the impressions like way too short and right, they have yeah, nothing yeah. to cut, then then it would. Okay. But you could you could elect to have it like hovering out like like oh, like that a little catch. bit. It's fine. Yeah. But that's generally what you wanna. Okay. Yeah. Like that. So then it goes. Alright. And so the. Uh, few settings that normally we, we don't, I mean I don't really care too much about mm -hmm. it but the most important ones is smoothing level right. and normally we just leave it to high Okay. and so that was the right side so we click the right start okay now it's going to start scanning it so it's not scanning and it's going to take a while <laughs> just out of interest how much custom volume would you say you guys get at Zap? Oh, look, it's, oh, it's it's I'm not too sure of exactly because like it tends to mm -hmm. swing around like okay, a huge yeah, bit, for sure. right? And maybe uh, just relative to like the universals that you guys sell. Oh, uh, it's definitely like if you're comparing like I like things that you have a universal mm -hmm. uh, version for. Generally speaking, we tend to find that the customs are a little bit more popular than universals. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's very very interesting. It's, yeah, because because most people it's like if you have the option to do a custom that's a little bit more mm -hmm. appealing for most people because even if like especially for people who are like newish into the hobby it's like mm -hmm. oh what, what's this custom IEM thing it's, it's a fascinating thing right, so right. They, that's what they go for and I think one of the advantages doing it at Zep right, is getting the impressions done like right on site that's not something that you can do in the US 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the US, we have to book an appointment, go down, yeah, yeah, yeah. get the impressions, and then we have to mail them out ourselves. Yeah, that's not something I, 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 I used to think a lot about because, like, the, yeah. the markets I'm more familiar with, like, the places mm -hmm. I've been, like, it's either Singapore or Japan. Right, like, they're something. more familiar with this type yeah. of stuff. But and in the US, it's just not yeah. very common, so. And I might, must imagine, like, sometimes or so, because, because sometimes we get brands who's like, okay, uh, here, here is the, 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 the impressions requirements you get and they'll detail things like oh we need it past the second van it must right, be right. like those sort of like instructions thing and it I, like it didn't really occur to me it's like why why this was a necessary thing mm -hmm. because like m you you generally if you would go to an audiologist to take any impressions because that's what you normally do right. right and most audiologists when they are trained to do your impression they are only doing like the inner canal part and mm -hmm. maybe a little bit on the outside because that's what you need for it. Hearing, hearing aids, aids and stuff right? of that nature. Yeah, so they don't do the whole full, like including oh, okay. the entire ear. And so I think someone, I think Jim mentioned me that you guys got certified for this or something like that, right? Yeah, so to, to be able to take an ear impression uh, by right, you should have attended the course and you need to get yourself certified. Mm. Uh, it's not anything super significant they just teach you like some like basically how to do it and certain okay. things to look out for it's like a, right. because it, it is considered like somewhat of a medical procedure yeah yeah exactly right and like generally speaking i don't really get people asking me it's like hey can i see your medical certificate yeah yeah of course so, but i did i did get one question like mm -hmm. like i did get one guy who was asking it's like oh uh do you have like an indemnity form or things like that oh really and i'm okay. like oh you're the first person to ask us like yeah, yeah, yeah. and i asked like like other man, like the other shop, retail stores around was like you guys do customs do you get a question like this like never oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well i think you were a lot more attentive than even my my doctor in the u.s who did so <laughs> yeah props for that yeah okay so you started working in the year 2020 so it's been about two years then yeah 2020 to be more precise it's like i think like july sometime around july 2020. okay okay that's when i was formally employed uh how long have you been in the, the hobby itself though? Have you worked for other retailers as well? No, no, I've, I've been in the hobby for maybe like prior to 2028, mm -hmm. like maybe about three or four years prior. Three or so four years. So it's not, I, I haven't been in the hobby for that long, relatively mm -hmm. speaking compared to some of my friends. Okay. Uh, as for other retailers, no, no, this is the first retailer I've worked for. Like just to share a bit of a background, I used to work with uh, this company called Groupset. You might have heard the you you probably might not have heard the, the of the company, but you mm -hmm. will know of brands like Tefal, Rowenta, mm -hmm. like those sort of like brands. So that's Groupset is basically the 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 the, co the company that owns all of these brands. Okay. And I used to work there. When I left I was a logistics executive. So oh, okay. I, I, I handle the inventory, the warehousing, mm -hmm. and uh, I manage the third party logistics. So oh, okay. that was what I was doing. And are you still doing that at Zup? Uh, mostly. Uh, so my role at Zep is uh, every, everybody mends the store. That's right, right. That's the thing. Uh, but the the where it differs is a secondary duty. So my secondary du duties pertains to inventory as well as a uh, local stock purchasing oh, okay. and things okay. like that. Uh, so that and a little bit more of the systems and like the databases and things like that. Like our shop, our online web store. Uh. Those are like the SKU listings and the, the inventory that's that's under my purview. Very cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. What made you want to work at Zap? So so when I started getting the hobby, I I then I discovered the Zap. Mm -hmm. I was a frequent customer, so like I oh, okay. like almost every almost every weekend, mm -hmm. I'd be I'd be around. So so the story goes like this: like in the first like couple of I want to say months, maybe like the second month of Zap's operation. Mm -hmm. uh, Christy was interviewed and uh, she had appeared in a Straits Time article, and which is Straits Times is the national newspaper. Oh, very cool. Right? And that weekend, she had to not be in Zeppelin because mm -hmm. she had to attend her sister's wedding. And back then, there were only two Zeppelin staff. Was Christy and Tushar? Oh wow! Right, so so Tushar was left to man the store alone, and that weekend itself, because people started getting word about like mm -hmm. Zeppelin, right, it was completely packed. And this is pre-COVID, so like if you saw a store downstairs, right, right, people were just standing around to no seats, right? Yeah, yeah. Just stand, just stand with the coffee cup, and just like chat with each other. Yeah, yeah. It was that packed, and 
I think uh, before Christy left, I think he told she told uh, me and my cousin Eugene was like, hey, uh, just keep an eye out on Tushar. Mm-hmm. So if he gets a little bit too right, overwhelmed, right. maybe just help out a little bit. So we decided to to help out. So we went behind the counter because initially the thought was like, hey, uh, it's not too hard. If someone asks for something, all you do is just mm-hmm. hand them that. Thing. Right. It was a lot easier back then because we didn't have as many things as we like. That's so someone was like, I want to try the HD six fifty. I'm like, I know which one that is. <laughs> Here you go, right. And it sort of like started from there, and the reason why I ended up working at Zeppelin was because like I think uh, after uh, after we've been doing this like on and off like and we knew Christy and and Tusha for a while, mm-hmm. uh, I think Christy was like thinking that Zeppelin needed a staff who was a little bit more like logistical minded like oh, okay for very cool so you yeah, right she, into that position yeah, basically initially she asked me like I think like on the second year of Zeppelin's operation whether I wanted mm-hmm. to join Zeppelin and I, I turned it down okay I turned it down because I was like oh uh, I'm still very new to the workforce because like, like the job I had with Group Set that was actually my first job oh okay, right? okay. and I've only been there for like a year mm-hmm. so I just didn't think that I have a lot to contribute although oh, okay. I could do some certain things better than she could right mm-hmm. until I think it wasn't until like three years after that after another three years yeah because every year she would be like hey <laughs> uh, if you like to join this year, I'm like, uh, maybe not this year. Right? Gotcha. Yeah, it was until a certain point where I decided, like, you know what, I, I think I'm ready to leave that company. Mm-hmm. Now uh, you've built up that experience, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then she was like, yeah, the, the positions, the, off, the offerings still, still stands. There, still right. stands, right? Uh, come on over. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that's how I. Oh, right. Oh, and it's done now. Okay. So it's one side done. And normally I would do a quick scroll and check also to make sure it's like mm-hmm. looks normal so that seems fine 